What's happening, guys? Cowboy here. We're back. Ready to continue. No uh, accidental 35-minute episodes again. I would have cut that off earlier. I just I didn't even notice. I really gotta stop doing that. It's like every time an episode goes to like 40 minutes long. That's... Are we ready for oh, shit. I didn't eat before this. Uh, weak to water, resistant to martial arts, and men. Ugh. He shattered my guard. This thing is just like shit on velvet, shit on Rokuro. Come on, put up some fight, okay? I mean, thankfully, successfully bring a Mystic Art. Yeah, that one. Um, thankfully, a lot of them are. Heels. How close are y'all on your cast heels? Is there something else? You're gonna swap these. As for you, are completely mastered. Okay. Oh, well, something else was mastered. Calcite waistcoat for you. This is one of the seven wonders of the world, the Burnak Geyser. The water heats up from underground until the pressure forces it to spray up from the surface. And the rainbows are caused by light reflecting from the salt suspended in the mineral water. It took tens of thousands of years for the minerals to accumulate here and form this phenomenon. Wow-wee! That was very educational. At least you know plenty of trivia, if nothing else. Additionally, the groundwater veins that feed this geyser are connected to the sea. Because of this, every now and then a boiled octopus or crab will shoot out from the geyser! No way! That's impossible! Well, not impossible, but with the salt content of the geyser's water, I bet they're seasoned to perfection. Mogulu, I'm declaring your bizarre imagination the eighth wonder of the world. People say that all the time. No, not double scorpions. Let's get started. Force sound. Oh, 
I haven't even looked. Have I gotten any new arts on Velvet lately, actually? Slag Assault. Splits the art the Shockwave Thrust. Limits the movements of POTUS demons. I've been waiting to... Turning Edge into Shadow Flame, Avalanche Fang into Megasonic. Oh, Megasonic Thrust goes into... I have Searing Edge a lot. Searing Edge mixed in here. Rising Moon, Searing Edge, and the Shadow. Searing Edge to Shadow Flow to Avalanche or Mega Sonic Thrust is supposed to go into Sag Assault. To Fire. Fire. Probably to start this off with Shadow. No, so, Megasonic Thrust into Slag Assault. From Slag Assault, we could go into a. Movement with the shockwave thrust crashes down. The avalanche. Avalanche Fang is cheaper. So I'd want to go Avalanche Fang. The Megasonic Thrust. Into Slag Assault. Lastly, into a Shadow Flow. Out shadow flow on that. I guess it is a fire move, so I can move it into there. Slag assault there as well. This is still water and wind. This is still pure martial arts. This is mostly earth, and then this has my fire move has worked out. Yeah. It works out pretty well. It stuns them and then she follows up with an attack that'll hurt them on the ground. chest somewhere over here. Oh, there it is. I was about to say, I'm like, I'm missing a chest. And there's like nowhere else to check over here. Got you little things. Don't waste my time. Let's see. He missed a fire. Oh boy. Oh god, they're all casting. Slow and break. Guys. We're finished here. Let's go. Hey, Belphegor earrings and a midi blouse. All right, let's switch you up to the anything number calcite garment and find your earrings. You are taking fucking forever on those damn things. 
Why does it seem like everyone around me is completely mad? Yeah! Continuing to fight when you know you'll lose just is insane! Would you... stand around and watch your comrade die just because you're scared? I wouldn't want to, but getting myself killed wouldn't save anyone either. Yes, it would be illogical to fight. Is being illogical really that bad? Well... At the Empyrean's throne, I remember Velvet standing, despite the horrible pain she felt. Rokuro is training with all his heart in order to defeat his brother Shigure. And Kurogane used up his own head to forge a powerful blade. None of that... is very logical. Yeah, I don't know quite how to put it, but... I think it's all amazing. <laughs> Aren't you forgetting someone? Hmm? Uh, Magi Lu is <laughs> traveling with us, even though she doesn't care. And that... Yes, go on. I don't really understand what that's about. Uh... <laughs> <gasps> Well, it is amazing in some sense, I suppose. That's fucking funny. Her modular is traveling with us, even though she doesn't really care. <laughs> that was a backhanded compliment, man. Aizen! Did you get the medicine to the ship's crew? Yeah! Good. My thanks to you. These soldiers won't be happy in the morning, but they're alive. Is this your work? No. They were like this when I got here. It must have been Zavid. He didn't kill a single one. Interesting. The Abbey is going to great lengths to arrest him. Even so, he clearly knows he's walking into a trap. What I don't get is why he roped me into all of this. If he didn't want my help, then what need did he have to play the Eifried card on me? If you knew this was a trap, why did you come? To see for myself. When I met Eifried, I was wallowing in despair that I would ever find a way to break the Reaper's curse. Stop denying reality, he told me. If you were really born with that curse, then it's a part of you. But if the Reaper learns to grasp the wheel of his life, even he may find his creed, his path through stormy waters. And so, I joined him aboard the Von Eltia. A creed of life. Let's say someone's murdered the captain. If it came as the result of him living life on his terms, I could accept that. Hmm. But if anyone, and I mean anyone, tries to crush his way of life, I could never forgive them. Who's there? It's rude to eavesdrop. If you got secrets, talk about them at home. Zavid, isn't there any way you and Aizen can work together somehow? Not if he's going to keep acting like this. <laughs> oh, man. <clears throat> well, that's how it is. What was the point of all that posturing? He could have just stayed hidden. Weirdo. Can't disagree there. Get the cats. You found the cats. Loringen Tower is a training ground for exorcists, right? Yes. It's a great edifice built on ancient ruins. Luffy said, did you ever go there when you were tethered to Teresa? I don't really remember the beginning of my service to Teresa. I see. What sort of training do they do there? Exorcists are tested and assigned Malakim equivalent to their aptitude with mana. It's also where they practice Malak arts and study our laws. So the lower ranks use it as a sparring ground in order to train up to the higher ranks? No, an exorcist's affinity to mana is not something that strengthens through training. We are given Malakim based on our inborn ability, then learn arts to suit that ability. So, an orderly is an orderly for life then? Correct. There'd be no spirit of competition then. Don't they want to get stronger, to advance through the ranks? There'd be no purpose to advancement. 
Rank signifies nothing more than the type and number of Malachim one can tether. People join the Abbey for only two reasons. To protect people from demons, and to save the world. Are all of you that dedicated to asceticism? How sickeningly noble of you. I wonder if your wills are suppressed just like those of the Malachim you use. Deviants like you could never possibly understand our motives. In any case, that is who awaits you at Loringen Tower. So we're in for a rough welcome. I say bring it on. I'm gonna fuck that tower up. I don't get it. Get what? Why did Eifried let Aizen join his ship, knowing he carried the Reaper's curse with him? What good did it do? I just don't see the reason behind it. Well, if it were me who had that curse, it would mean that you and Velvet could die because of it, right? Yeah, I suppose so. If that's the case, then I'd feel like I'd both want to and not want to be close to you two. And I'd probably really, really hate myself for it. Do you suppose that's how Aizen feels? But Eifried still took him in. He agreed they put up with the curse together. It's all a bit hard to fathom. Well, if one thing's for certain, it sounds like Eifried's a very strong man. At least for a base lawless pirate. I can't wrap my head around Zavid. Hmm. We witnessed his unwillingness to kill before, but it seems he's quite serious about it. Maybe that's why I don't feel scared of him. Even when he and Aizen were about to fight, I didn't feel tense at all. Perhaps that's just because you've been around Velvet a bit too long, kiddo. Next to her, few people are frightening. Do you think so? Don't ask me. <laughs> he doesn't come across as vicious. I think that's why you're not scared. Because he's just a brawler? <laughs> Maybe he's just naive. Okay, so he's just a naive brawler. He's still involved with Eifried's disappearance, and he's also taking on the Abbey. I just don't get him. Me neither. Uh-huh. I agree, but I don't understand any of you either. Well, no one understands you. Sitting here and betraying these people that are basically your comrades at this point. How do I get down there? This, this will bother me a lot. No, I can see. There's gotta be. Oh. Hmm. Oh, it's a cave, isn't it? There's a cave over there, and I pop out over here, probably. Probably. Aizen, can I ask you about that thing Zavid had? It belonged to Ifri, didn't it? I've read much of the Abbey's archives and weaponry, but I've never seen anything like it. He found it when we crossed to the far continent. It's a relic from a long-vanished civilization. He's like me and can't resist a good treasure. But of everything we've found, that one was his most prized. What is it? I can't say. It seemed like a weapon, but Eifried wouldn't let anyone touch it. He went off and tested it on his own, then came back all grinning, saying he had an ace up his sleeve the next time we got into a fight. Then it's definitely some sort of ancient combat device? But why is Zavid looking for Eifried? To apologize for stealing it? He doesn't seem like that much of a gentleman. Did he really steal it? What do you mean? It's just my feeling, but... Zavid doesn't seem like the type of Moloch to steal something so precious. He said he just picked it up. Perhaps he's trying to return it. Perhaps. Sounds to me like Zavid probably knows captain in some capacity. There's a board again. Seagate Fortress. Wait, that's not where I'm going. Board again? Like, the board again that I had to fuck people up at before? Yeah, and here's those tunnels. Oh shit. 
all the way over here. Wow. Found some traveling. Over this way last time I was here. For a bunch of uh, exorcist Nazis guarding it. Well, come on. We can do this. Okay. We won, right? Yes, little guy. We won. Alright, we're gonna go explore this first. Well, this explains how to get to that sneaky chest. I thought I had to go in the cave. Nope, it's a lower path. There's probably a reason to come here. Can I teleport back out? I can. I'm gonna pop into the next zone real fast just to see how long this place goes on. We're probably gonna teleport out now. Um, yeah, this place probably goes on for a bit. Back to burn. Let's make our way on over. The Lothan friend. However, I'm supposed to say it. Lothan? Lothinger? There's a chest over there. Why do I not? Oh, that's right. Peach jump. Okay. Lothan again? I think. No one on guard? They're really not bothering to hide this trap. They probably knew we'd sense it. The question now is just what they're planning to spring on us. Save right outside, so should probably use it. Anyway, I think we should probably wrap up before we go in here, because I think this will more than likely lead to a longer episode. So stay tuned, and we will catch you guys tomorrow with more.